Welcome back to the Middle Island Country Club on sunny Long Island. Today I'm joined by my friend Juan Baronecci of the Gold Bar team at EXP Realty. Juan is your premier team leader in Manhattan and Miami. This guy's got a goal of 10,000 agents on his team. I can't wait to pick his brain about how he's gonna do that. It's tea time, baby. Come join us on Real Estate Agents in Golf Carts, Drinking Bloody Mary. I'm Kyle Kelly, the associate broker for the island-wide team at Realty Connect USA. I've spent the last 11 years perfecting my real estate game, but unfortunately, my golf game has really gone to shit. This is my attempt to incorporate more golf into my work life. So hang on while we spoil a good walk while under the influence of real estate, talking about cocktails and talking about anything else that comes up with some of my closest friends in the real estate industry and hopefully some decent golfers. This is Real Estate Agents and Golf Carts Drinking Bloody Marys. Mr. You ready for this? Yes. What's going on, buddy? I'm doing great, bro. How are you Thanks doing? for joining me. Thanks Anytime. For, Thanks for so, the invite. So what, a two-hour drive out here? Two-hour drive. Two-hour drive. Yeah. Two-hour drive for me yeah. to kick your ass out on Just the to get my ass whooped. All right. So, <laughs> Sounds we'll, good. We'll, we'll, so, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll do see you golf? This first. This is honestly my first, second time. Second time. I, I've hit the range like three or four times, but okay. let's, we'll see what happens. All right. I've, I've been out there I've, once I've played some high school baseball, you know? Same thing, right? It'll be a horrible swing. Oh, there we go. Let's see how this goes. All right, cool. Let's go for it. Absolutely. Enjoy. First time I met you was at a YPN event out in Queens. Yes. And somebody said, You got to meet yes. Ron. Yeah. He wants to be the next president of LIBOR. That is absolutely right. correct. I came yeah. over, I shook your hand, you said, Yeah, within the next year or two, I want to be president of LIBOR. <laughs> it's been a little while. <laughs> it's, it, I think it's been a couple of minutes, it, right? It, it, yeah. It's been a little while, but yeah. why? Uh, has the goal changed? Uh, why are so, we not president so, of LIBOR? Yet? So it, it, it changed as I grew, and I realized that when it came to what I wanted to do, I wanted to help as many agents as possible. And it changed in the sense that I went from wanting to be a local president to say, hey, how do I help people on a national level? So that's the only reason I kind of let go of that dream and then started pursuing something else. Okay, so yeah. what's the goal now? Where, where do you see yourself? So honestly, I, I want to get to 10,000 agents on my team in the next four years. 10,000 agents? Yeah. So I just took on my 10 agents. There you go. Okay. So there you we go. Got, we got to hit a little bit yeah, about that. Absolutely. Uh, how do you so. get to 10,000 agents? Yeah. Out of that? We're going to talk about that for sure. Let's go, let's go tee you off. First. Okay, perfect. <laughs> so before we get to the 10,000 agent thing, though, your involvement in LIBOR. Yes. Right? So I know you've been a president of a chapter. Uh, well, I was a director for uh, Northeast Queens. Okay. Uh, I've served as president of NAREP. Uh, what is NAREP? NAREP is National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals. Excellent. Yes, yeah, okay. so I, I was leader of the of the Queens chapter, and then I've been highly involved with um, NISAR as a director as well. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Now, so getting to this 10,000 agent mark, where are we at now? As of this morning, I'm at 885. 885 so, agents on your team. That's the Gold Bar team, right? No, th this is just my overall team within my organization at EXP. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. The, the Gold Bar team is, is eight agents, eight or nine. Uh, I don't think we're going to grow up past that. I think we've hit our, uh, our limit. So eight or nine on your specific team. On my personal team, team that yeah. That you're overseeing on a exactly. daily basis. Exactly. Correct. Yeah. Yep. And like I said, I'm, I'm at 10 agents as of uh, this week. And yeah, I've already said, stop in here for a little while. Absolutely. You know, like trying to yeah. keep your thumb on everybody. There's is, only is so tough. many handles you could hold. There's only so many people you can speak to on a given week on every single basis. So, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh! A little fade, a little fade. Oh, I saw a leaf come down. I don't know about the ball. Oh! That's right. Good card. in the shade. Pick it up We're good. Good. Yeah. Nice. I'll see you next week. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Currently at 885 agents. Yes, sir. Now, what does that mean in terms of you were saying, I'm just going to throw it out there. <laughs> you were saying, you know, 10 on your team, 9 on your team. All right. But then where are these 885 agents for? So essentially what ends up happening is it's such a unique model because I don't have to go out there and recruit all these agents. Essentially, I build out these branches, right? And to date, I have around 40 branches built out uh, of agents that I've attracted to the company who want to go out there and build their own brokerages. Uh, those 40 have then gone out and attracted one or two agents. 
Those 80 have then gone out and attracted 160. Those 160 have gone out and attracted 300, and so on and so forth. So I'll have almost basically like my own franchise, or a giant organization underneath me with close to 900 people. Nice. Oof. Whoa, what was that? <laughs> what was that? Oh, this guy. Wait, drove camera me, missed yeah. that. What was that? All right, all right. I see how we're playing these days. <laughs> this is still everything in the bag for me, so. <laughs> Only a little ways out. What are you working with over there? You want yourself. So I'm swinging a five. Is that a five? No. Wrong hole. <laughs> right over the, the hill, baby. Least. Not in the beach. Right over. Up and over the hill. Through the woods. It's a grandmother's house. We go. <laughs> Yeah, good form. So, so you're building out this team underneath you. Yeah. All right, 885 agents now, looking to get to 10,000. Are you still in production? Are you still selling? Or? So I actually stepped out of production probably six months ago. Okay. Um, I haven't taken a listing. I haven't worked with a buyer. Uh, we've been consistently selling anywhere between 10 to 15 homes a month, uh, but that's all me and my team working on their own. So what does your day-to-day -day look like? Is it recruiting? Is it training? Or my day-to-day -day is a combination of coaching agents and recruiting agents. And really what I love doing is introducing people to a concept that they didn't even know was possible. Because you have to think of it, we're going 100% virtual. So to take someone from that brick and mortar lifestyle right. to now this cloud concept, it's a little bit of a transition. I always said my office is my car. And everything I do is online. Yeah. Yeah. From sky slope on signing docks. I mean, everything I do there is online. There you go. Yeah. I love an office. There you go. Yeah. I, so I have an office for my team. I love to. I, I need to get up and leave the house. Exactly. Yeah. I, I can't sit in my basement, especially with two little ones at home. So I get up. I go to the office. I go to work. Correct. And uh, there's some people. Some people need that brick and mortar. Even even if the operation is completely in the cloud. I agree. To go. And and that's the beauty about this. I actually have an office in Long Island City. Me and my team use it. But 90% of the agents on the team, they're never going into it anyway. So it's all about adapting to what the agent needs. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah, let's put these things in. Let's do it. Little tap, 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 tap it in. There, there we go. There you go. We got it. Let's go. Nice. What is that, nine? Uh, I think we're done for the week, right? <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about your day to day. What does it look yeah. like when you're not in production, right? You, so you're training, you're recruiting. What are your daily goals, daily objectives? What does that look like for you? So it's, it's actually pretty interesting because my daily objective is that of a top agent, right? If you're going out there and you want to produce, you're going to be out there prospecting. So I spend 9 to 12 o'clock every single day, three hours a day, just prospecting for new talent, uh, going out there and identifying agents that would make a good fit for the team, and then obviously having consultations with them to see uh, if they're interested. So essentially a lot of my day is still the same as that of an agent. I just my, changed my target from a for sale by owner or an expired listing to now working with other agents. Trying to recruit agents. And exactly. Then, and then the rest of your day is set on, on training? Is it, you... Rest of the day is either trainings that I have set up with the team or consultations with uh, broker owners, independent brokerages, people that would actually be a good fit for this model, or other team leaders as well who would want to transition. Now, do you do in-office training? Do you record your trainings to give that? All, all, my, all my trainings are virtual. I do everything via Zoom. Those are the live ones. And then when it comes to actually pre-recorded trainings, I have an entire list of library that I go ahead and share with my agents in case they want to get access to lead generation, marketing, listing presentation, scripts, anything you can imagine. So when you say you get out of production, now I know I'm still producing, but I'm, I'm passing a lot of stuff off to the team. Yep. My work week probably went from about 80 hours a week down to roughly 40 hours a week now. Yep. Um, we can't include this as work though, Kevin. <laughs> about 40 this is hours a week. prospecting, absolutely. Right? Um, does it go up from there? Do you, do you think uh, you're working more trying to recruit or do you think you're working less? So it really, it really comes down to what I have now because I've automated my entire team. I have the right managers in place. I have the right back end staff to support it. Um, I probably work around five hours a week when it comes to the actual production side of the business. Um, and when it comes to the recruiting side, it's really as much as I want to. Um, I choose to work a 40 hour work week because at the end of the day, I could be doing that or playing golf. And as you can see, I'm not that good at this. So <laughs> choose to stick to that. Well, try to get a little more golf. And there you go. <laughs> but that's about it, yeah. Right, uh -huh. cool. Oh, yeah. Ooh. So you're now operating a team out of New York. Yes. Right, closer to Manhattan. 
We actually do all five boroughs and Long Island. Okay. So from Manhattan out to the Hamptons, I have someone stationed on my team to make sure that area is serviced. So, so you, yeah, you've adopted the idea of the island wide. Now, there you right go. There you go. Right? All across. And then I took a little flight down to South Florida and I said, hey, let me just expand it over there as well. So you did an expansion team down in uh, what, Miami? Exactly. So we have someone in Miami and then I have another partner agent in Central Florida. And the reason I started that was, hey, one out of four people here wanted to move down there. So I said, why not continue the experience and we found some partners down there. So I'm working right now on um, my license in North Carolina, South Carolina. Nice. Uh, I've got a target of Miami in the next five years there you and go. then San Diego in the next seven to ten years. There you go. So looking to expand myself. I love there. it. I love it. And yep. listen, I, I think now as, as more than ever, we're becoming global advisors, not just local agents, you know? Absolutely. Uh, now the, the New York team. Yes. And you do you do a lot of Manhattan, you do a lot of the five boroughs. Yes. Um, being out here on the eastern eastern end of Long Island, yep. um, after COVID, we heard mass exodus. Yep. You know, everybody came out to the island, and we saw it. We saw the money in their pockets, the money in their duffel bags. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. Prices went through the roof because people were looking for property. They were looking Correct. for a bigger house. Correct. Right? What is city living like now? Is, is the city as empty as they say? I don't get out there. Much. So I, I would say two months after the pandemic, kind of everyone, we call it like it, it, it settled down, right? Um, it was a little bit dry in terms of sales and rentals and things like that. But I'd say over the last three months, it rebounded like crazy. Yeah, condo prices are shooting back up to the roof. Uh, year to date, in terms of comparison to last year, I think prices are just way higher. Um, so it's it's back, it's hotter than ever. And So when we yeah. look back at these charts, it's gonna be a, a blip. Exactly. It's not going to be, oh, that killed New York. And, you know. Not at all. And you, it was a time for you to go in there and swoop in a good deal, yeah. but now those deals are gone. Everyone wants to get back to the city, the hustle and bustle. You, you can't ever let go of it, you know? Gotcha. And it's funny because I, I predicted probably the opposite. You know, yeah. During COVID, we're all locked in our basement, <laughs> locked wherever we yeah. were locked, and you know, just kind of making predictions and trying to figure out what to do with our our, our income and, and our industry. Yeah. And I predicted that... Uh, it would take a generation for the cities to come back. It would take the next young kid to go, you know, it's a good place to live in the city, in Manhattan, right? Yeah. I really thought it was gonna be this exodus of people just abandoning the city lifestyle for a while. But you tell me it's the opposite. Yeah, I, 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 I think it's coming back stronger than ever. A lot of the new generation, they wanna go out there and try living in the city for the first time. Restaurants are open, clubs are opening back up, bars are opening back up. So I think in terms of excitement right now, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty hot, but who knows where that could turn out. In well, a years. that to me means our suburbs, these prices are going to start to come down a little bit. The demand's going to dwindle a little bit. We'll see. Maybe some of those that were in the market previously with an yeah. FHA, a you know, not necessarily conventional, a 3%, 5% down. Yep. Um, maybe it's going to open up the opportunity for them again because the competition will start to... Exactly, yeah. But, but listen, inventory is still really tight, so as long as that's happening, prices are going to be through the roof. Right. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you're over there. I'm over there. Let's, okay. let's put these things in the cup. <laughs> Let's that did go. not move the way I thought it was going to move. Let's get it. This is the type of hole that separates the men from the boys. All right. And why is that? Because it's only 100 yards. <laughs> <laughs> if we can't put it on the green from here, we should just go home. That's it. We'll hole, call right? it a day. Um, Separating the men from the boys. Separating the top agent from the average agent. Okay. So what, do you, what do you think is the difference between the top producer and just the average everyday agent out there? One word, focus. That's what it comes down to. How focused is that one agent on his end goal versus every other agent in the market competing with him? Now is it just about focusing on the goal? focusing on those steps that you got to take to get to the goal. I think, I think it's both. Number one, they have to be focused on the goal in the sense that there are so many opportunities thrown us every single day, right? You're going to have uh, people that come up to you and be like, hey, uh, why don't you come invest in this? And why don't you get started in Bitcoin? And then we have crypto, day trading, e-commerce, Shopify, Amazon. <laughs> they're going to catch those shiny little objects everywhere. We, we, we could call it the, uh, <laughs> the shiny object syndrome, yeah. right? Where there's so many ways to make a million dollars a year that people continuously continue to get distracted. So a focused agent is an agent that knows what business they're in, they understand what their goal is, they understand how many houses they want to sell, and they get rid of all the other distractions just to focus on their day to day. And if an agent could go out there and from nine to five do the same thing every single day over a period of what, three, four, five years, 
there's no stopping that agent. Absolutely. I, I always uh, equate it to, and I, I probably ripped this off from another coach at some point, but building a bridge. Yeah. And agents tend to start to build the bridge and then somebody else says, oh, we can build a better bridge over here, and they never finish the bridge. They start building another exactly. bridge. Oh, we can build a faster bridge over here, and they keep building these bridges halfway across, yep. three quarters of the way across, and they never see to the finish line. Yeah. Build that bridge all the way across to the finish line, then say, how do I add another pillar? Yep. How do I make my business bigger and expand? And, and that, that goes into the compliment of folks, which is patience, right? You can be the most focused person on the planet. You can give it your all for six months. You're not going to see the results of that labor for what? Another three, four years. So you got to combine the both. I was uh, just chatting back and forth on Messenger this morning, actually, with an agent down in Florida. Yeah. And uh, she was recently licensed. And she's already looking to move brokerages and already picked up, uh, went back to her old job. And, oh, this is just so hard to try to make money right away. I said, yeah. I told you from day one, it's, it takes a while, man. Like Absolutely. most agents aren't seeing a return for, like you said, three, four years, right? It's I, I, focus and discipline for a long time. I've long interviewed year. several multi-million dollar producers, people at the top making seven figures a year, and the majority of them, I'd say 90% of them, first year, make less than 10, 20 grand. Yeah. So if that was the judgment or that was the metric on what we're judging these people on, majority of these seven figure producers are terrible agents right but after two three four years they get the hang of it they stick through and then boom out of nowhere they start shining how about you how long you been licensed i've been licensed for five years i got my license i would say june of 2016. so i would call you an overnight success <laughs> well here's the thing no, no one knows this but my first 12 months in the business i made around seven grand in commissions you can't live off that i i share this with everybody when i teach my business planning class my first year in real estate which was 11 years ago i made 632 dollars there you go we need to lose money, right? But don't worry, I doubled my money the following year. <laughs> right. And it took that that's third 100%, year. That's 100% boost, right? right. Absolutely. But yeah. it took that third year, but what it really took was, like you said, focus, right? Yeah. I was chasing this shiny object, bartending at night, detailing boats during the day, swinging a hammer on the weekends, doing yeah. every other thing other than focusing on my business. Right. Yep. And then I, in my third year, I said, am I gonna do this job? or am I just gonna make it a little side hobby? Yeah. I said, let me focus on it. And year three, yeah, I turned around and I made close to six figures, just under six figures. I said, oh, I can make a living doing this. Yeah. Now, how do I make six? How do I double that? How do I triple that? Correct. Right. So Absolutely. yeah, it, it's all about that focus without jumping in full force, both feet wet, yeah. swimming to the shore before the sharks get you, you're not gonna see the result. 100% man, couldn't agree more. So let's focus on getting this ball in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, way off to the right. <laughs> it's all downhill That's great. from here. That's great. <laughs> oh, That's great. I don't know what the hell is wrong with this guy. What is this thing? Oh my goodness. Come on, Kyle. Where the hell is this thing? Oh, while Juan's looking for his ball, this lost ball Bloody Mary breaks brought to you by. Hi, my name is Brianna. I'm the bartender here at Middle Island Country Club, and this is how we do Bloody Marys. Enjoy, guys. Thanks, Brianna. You know, I know she's using a mix, but something about those mixes that aren't too bad, you know? It's like, so you don't gotta throw all these different ingredients in and garnishes on top. Very simple. The spot, but it's still, you know? yeah, it still tastes good. Yeah. Good job. You ready to hit the next hole? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Cheers. Cheers. So Kyle, what are your thoughts on working with a good mortgage lender? Um, it's probably one of the most important pieces of the puzzle right now, All right? So there's a lot of my sellers right now moving out of state. And the biggest issue we're running into is mortgage brokers outside of our area 
that just aren't familiar with how we do things here on Long Island. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So when you're trying to buy here on the island or trying to buy here downstate New York, having somebody who's really familiar with the process and knows that there's more than just one or two products out there for you, right? Go out searching for the right product for the buyer, I think is, is one of the keys. And they gotta do their due diligence, man. I'm tired of seeing, in my opinion, just BS paper, yeah. right? Like don't write me a pre-approval unless you've actually done the look into their financials, gotten the W-2s, run the credit, right? And sometimes those pre-approvals just aren't worth the paper they're written on these days. And Absolutely. you really gotta vet the lender. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right? So I know, I know I try to have my buyers work with the lenders that I know, like, trust, and I know they're doing the right job. Mm -hmm. But sometimes when we're fielding those offers on our listings, it's tough to make sure they're using the right lenders, right? So you really gotta do above and beyond vetting of those lenders. Absolutely, no, and, and I think it's crucial to have that good lender that you could trust and is gonna do the right thing as part of your team, you know? Because if you're gonna go out there and you're gonna be pumping out deals, uh, it's only a matter of time till one of those deals falls through or doesn't make it to contract because as you mentioned, a lot of these people don't vet their financials. So I, I think it's crucial. A lot of it doesn't even come down to the company, right? It comes down to the lender itself, it comes down to that loan officer themselves. 100%, absolutely. They, they can move around a little bit if they need to, but if, if I know that loan officer knows what they're doing and how to get a deal done, Correct. I'm gonna follow them wherever they go. That's it, absolutely. It's hot out here. Absolutely. You ready to sink these and maybe go grab a bite to eat? Let's call it a day. Yeah, I can use a cold one. <laughs> I'll put it in first. Eh? <laughs> ah! Ready, set. Ah! Ready? All right. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Great round. That was it, man. Thanks again for joining me. Anytime, man. Took that Thanks trip for the out invite. Here. Yeah. I'm sure, sure you're glad you drove two hours to stand in the heat all day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, not a bad round, though. Could right? have been in the pool, man. Just hey. think about it. <laughs> this has been a Sky Limitless Media Production.